Professor Lee. It is my honor being here and also especially having nice weather today. So I think it's too good to be inside. So I'm sorry about that. But we have to talk about something about our the livable communities. That's what we have to talk today. So I'm currently the director of Transportation Research Center for livable communities. I mean, my original expertise is intelligent transportation systems, but these days I'm working more on the, uh, these livable communities, and also we are trying to develop with sustainable transportation systems. This is not technical at all. This talk will be very, very general, and also uh, we like to talk about people rather than material and anything else. So it'll be very, very simple, very, very easy, and also, even I hope we are discussing about people. So that's what I present my presentation today. Okay, so what is the livable communities? So basically, residents, employees, customers, visitors perceive the community is what? What do you expect? For the livable communities, for what the first one you think? So, yep. People. People. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about the people. However, safety. safety. Yeah, safe. So we are talking about safe. The community should be safe. And what would you like to be? Where you like you want to be? Comfortable. Healthy. Healthy. Yeah. Good environment, including our good infrastructure. We don't want to face any potential problems. That's where we are at. And quality of social interactions, like this place, we're having all interactions, and some opportunity to recreation, and some unique cultural environmental resources. That's what we are talking about. So then what's the transportation about? We know we are facing very poor infrastructure. So our highway system was built already how many years? Since 1956. Afterward, how many years? So now it's all deteriorated. So now we are facing that. It is part of our transportation system. But today, is my talk will be more on the other aspect. Hey, our infrastructure, how, how was it? So we spent a lot of effort in moving vehicle so that our transportation system is completely the auto-dependent system. But that's one of the maybe weakness so that our, our uh, society may not be, to some, ex some extent, very expensive, may not be educated. So, how we like to make? So then we want to coordinate our transportation systems with the housing and commercial development, all of those, so that we can provide access to affordable and environmentally sustainable the transportation. That's what we are, we are at. Okay, so here's one say. Okay, livability means being able to take your kids to school, go to work, see a doctor, drop by grocery or post office, go out to dinner or movies, and play with your kids at park, all without having to get in your car. So that's what we are talking. This is not what I'm saying. This was the former U.S. Secretary of Transportation Lahoud was mentioning about. That's what we are trying to make. So, maybe our liberal communities, sustainable communities are having all those aspects. Maybe to save our time, I just skip at this time. Okay, let me give us some maybe quick kids. Okay, what percent of kids between age 5 to 14 usually walked bicycle to school? So, we are completing 40, 40 years difference. 1969, it was saying 48%. So four years later, what percent? 10%. Five. Okay, so slightly better than we thought. 13%. That's what we have. And then how many kids want to walk or bicycle to school? What percentage? 2%? Kids want to walk 80%. Yeah. They want, however, Parents, no, it's too, too risky. I mean, even myself, if my son is asking to, hey, I want to bike, and I may hesitate. That's how we are at, right? That's how we are at. So, 
and also looking at the uh, percent of children living within one mile range to the school. So 1969, 41% were living nearby school, but now number down to 31%. And also among those, how many children are walking or bicycle to school? It was 89% if they are living one mile range, but number down to only 35%. Even if it is a very walkable distance, still parents are taking them in their car. So that's what we are in our transportation. So my question is, is our community really walkable or bikeable? Are we and our kids healthy? Probably not. So apparently. So not having that exercise, not, having, not walking, not bicycling, making them fat. So then 1990, so scale up and down. And then color changes, 2000 and 2010, as you see. Obesity is going up to 25 or even more, depends on the states. So that, that is a good indicator, having our community is not healthy enough. Maybe partly transportation system is responsible for those unhealthy society. Yeah. So maybe transportation systems and health, maybe one of the good examples was happened in 1996. So some Olympic game in Atlanta, they banned single occupant cars in downtown Atlanta. So that they did a different after study. Hey, traffic, of course, going down, they banned. That's where we know. Pico ozone, 28%. But more importantly, the so asthma-related event for children down to 42%. So that was a good indicator. Having the better air quality, we can improve. Transportation is directly impacting the, our health. So transportation is not just moving vehicle, but many other things. So we are facing the aging society, as you know. Probably people over here, maybe 20 or 40 years later, we are within the category, most likely, most of them. So right now, around 13% of the population is over 65, but that is growing to 28%. 20% will be 65 or more, even many percent are 75 or 85, so that we are facing the aging society. So that question is, is our community prepared to accommodate this? So maybe question, do you expect your son or daughter will come to your house, give a ride when you need, but you cannot drive? So what you do, what do you expect? Maybe you may get stuck home, right, in the future. We don't want to face our lives like staying home because of the transportation problem, right? And also right now, the transit becomes one of the issues. So although 71% of all the households want to live within walking distance to transit, but still only 53% are within that category. And millions of zero vehicle households still are in living together with us, but yet, Hundreds of thousands of general, general vehicles are also living in out of transit ranges. So transit accessibility becomes one of the important issues these days. So that all talking about, so our transport research center called the livable community, center the livable communities, but we are talking about other things, safety, environmental sustainability, and economic competitiveness, and good, fair, good uh, repair. So that those things are basically all five things are raised by USDOT. And then our center is dealing with all new technology, not only commuters, but all different types of people using all different types of transportation mode. So we are trying to use new technology, how we are going to fill those gaps. So our focus of the center is improving public transit system and providing better and safer pedestrian bicycle network, and also enhancing transport and accessibility for children, people with a disability, older adults, and low-income population. So there are many agenda, but in today's discussion, maybe I briefly touch a couple of agenda related with maybe pedestrian and bicycle topic only. So that the other things we can discuss, but time 
That's not allowed. All right. Safety is our highest priority, as you know. So there is one initiative is aimed at reversing the recent rise in deaths and injuries among the growing number of Americans who bicycle or walk to work to reach public transportation and to other important destinations. Who told you that? As you know, the Fox, current U.S. Secretary of Transportation, he brought the initiative. Now we know pedestrian bicycle safety is one of the also big issues. Apparently, pedestrian fatalities, a bicycle fatalities, is a growing recent five years. Number was 4,100 to 4,700 past five years. That account almost 14% of total fatal. So as you know, how many people are dying on the roadway in the United States every year? Slightly more than 30,000 people. So that's what we have. A lot of people are dying because of our transportation. And among those, 14 to 15% are non-motorized because they are very the vulnerable. So looking at the uh, history of walking and bicycling, probably long time ago, our primary mode might have been walking and bicycling. But later on, 1950s, and then completely we forgot, hey, what is the bicycle? Bicycle was just maybe a hobby, nothing more than any transportation. But now it tends to change. So now it's a resurgence of bicycle and pedestrian because we are talking about people. So by age group, comparing the other, other, other nation, so US, obviously we know public transportation, you cannot even see numbers. Very, very small percentage. Bicycle, you barely see. So that's what we are at. Majority, we are depend on the automobile transportation and private cars. That's why we got a lot of congestion, because all the highways, we have millions of people in you know, one car, one person. And then, maybe, especially the bicycling, as you see the AG group. By AG group, very, very small percentage compared to the other European countries. I mean, that's not mean that we like the other countries, but we have to learn from other, other countries. And comparing the fatalities, even though small number of pedestrian bicyclists in the United States, in terms of fatalities by vehicle mile traveled, still we are far more than the other countries having more pedestrian bicyclists. What's the reasons for those fatalities? <coughs> Major reason, fail to yield. Fail to yield right away. And there are many other reasons. Bicycle, fail to yield. We don't know how to use bicycle. We don't know how to interact with vehicle and pedestrian bicyclists. So most of crashes in the urban area was within intersection. That's one of the key points. But also rural area, there are a lot of fatalities in the uh, middle block areas too. So this is one of the research that maybe currently we are doing for Michigan, and then we are looking at four more details. What are the reasons for uh, those crashes and fatalities, including fatal and incapacitated the, uh, injuries? Still similar pattern we see, so everywhere. So motorist is trying to overtake a bicyclist, and then they got hit, or they not, cannot negotiate at the intersections. So, make it short. What are the common the causes in single single world world? So failure to yield. So what are the alternatives? How will we make it better? Maybe I can touch a couple of items. Maybe infrastructure is one thing, and also behavior, education, enforcement is another category, and also maybe some technology that we are talking. It may may not help, but we want to we want to look at what they are. So urban street design guideline was now provided. So now we are talking about, hey, we typically talk highway lanes supposed to be 12 feet, one lane, right? But do we need a 12 feet in the urban area? Maybe we have to question ourselves. By widening the lane, we are asking people, asking drivers, driving faster, and then killing 
pedestrian bicyclist. Maybe in the urban area, 10 foot might be sufficient. And then you can save other space for bicyclists and also providing the parking. So this is one of the examples, not mine, but I just copied it from other resource. So this is a kind of typical roadway having five lane commercial stripe. So as you see, the center lane exists, two, two lanes both sides. How did it look better? So we have trees, and also we closed some unnecessary access. So having too many access causes bicyclists, pedestrian facing more crashes. And also we are providing some bicycle space and a lot of trees to help for our health. So other examples could be so-called bike lane because the bicyclists are getting hit at the intersections. Hey, why don't you provide a space for so-called bicycle box at the intersection? So there are some space. Maybe this is actual the photo in Portland. Portland has very good environment for bicyclists, and then those are fairly common. Maybe there are some more different way of making intersections. Maybe in the past we widened intersections so that we can increase the capacity for traffic. Maybe we can change the concept. Hey, why don't you narrow down the space at the intersection so that bicyclists can make all directional movement and also narrowing crosswalk, basically, exposure to traffic for the pedestrian might be shorter. So that may be safe pedestrian bicycle. This is downtown area, so that we are not talking about any real mobility issues. They tend to slow down anyway. So that case is we have refused island for the protected bicyclists. So that typically bicyclists are hit those places and then stop up for and bicycle crossing and also even bicycle the signal faces. Those are making our community more believable. So we talked about maybe some information on the other uh, infrastructure. What about the behavior side? I saw one, this is what we call in street R1 sign. I saw one, actually someone hit. I'm not sure that you haven't seen it. On the this way, I saw one of those signs. Did you recognize? Even maybe you may not even recognize. But that sign was not standing, was fall. <laughs> but anyhow, it was good to see. So those are some information was for drivers. So that driver supposed yield to pedestrian. So then we investigated how did it go? So yielding percentage of different locations, but make it short. About 10% were yielding without having R1 sign. But once we have those, that increases to 80%. I mean, it depends on the location. But we saw there are some of those behavior changes through different types of infrastructure. And also more about, let's look at the uh, blind pedestrian now. So different types of yielding. If we just stand, and then we could make yield only 33%. And if we even came, if you display cane, maybe 44%. If you cane flagging, you get 41%. If you have hands up, yeah, you get 74%. The best way is so-called reversible step. At the intersection, step in, step back. Then the driver may think that, okay, the pedestrian or person is trying to cross, then they may stop, actually 90%. So combining other activities, however, gaze. You say hands up and gaze. Then the driver may think that, hey, the pedestrian already know I'm going. So that gazing creates less yielding behavior. So that the best way is just reverse. And then don't look at, but you can look at the other side, not, not directly the way, right? So, so eye contact is more dangerous, that's why I don't say. But there are some kind of survey or data experiment, how we can make our 
infrastructure and transport and system better, new technology is coming up. So everybody knows about now so-called connect to vehicle technology. So people are expecting, hey, we are now having zero death in transportation once we have this kind of a system because we are all connected, vehicle to vehicle connection, vehicle to even pedestrian connection, and then maybe we can get some information from vehicle to pedestrian and also signal get tied. So those new technology may help. Also, people are talking about the self-driving cars. <clears throat> How self-driving -car, self car will be designed? Apparently, zero vehicle, right? So that maybe now we begin looking at, hey, there are some self-driving cars out there. We begin looking at those. Maybe in the future, maybe we may be curious, hey, the car was driven yeah. by human. So that how will you feel? Maybe we may feel that people driven the vehicle is safer or self-driving car is safer. So there are a lot of, a lot of issues. Very recently, I saw one of the articles on MIT Technology Review, so, so only a week ago, whether self-driving car is designed not to hit the person, but they did some experiment. There are some ethical issues now, having maybe five people in front of you and the one person. Would you hit five people or one person if you cannot avoid it? I mean, or get away with it. There are good old people. Would you avoid and kill yourself or hit? I mean, this is really a human dilemma. But we are having those issues. So that self-driving technology is giving us better opportunity in saving our human lives. But still, a lot of issues. Even further, probably if I knew this, I just cross, even if the car is approaching. Because I know the car was programmed to stop for me. So that everybody's just crossing everywhere. I know the car is stopping. Probably there are other interesting issues we have to think about, right? And new people movers, you may see. This is the, uh, what movie is that? Back to the Future 2, yeah? So, I mean, it's a Hoover board. I mean, that was exactly about this time. We're supposed to have Hoover board. It's coming up. We may see those. And even the Segway, I mean, actually people began using for their commuting so that they don't have to worry about any congestion. They can find a way between vehicles and they get there even <coughs> faster. And solo wheel, actually it's one wheel. I mean, my son was asking, hey, can I have this one for commuting to school? So, oh, <laughs> So we are not ready. We are not ready to accommodate those new changes in our uh, transportation system. So basically, I do not intend to give you any solution, but rather I will throw out questions: what our transportation should be. So we are now reversing our transportation the hierarchy. So conventionally, we talked about the vehicle. How long vehicles have been driven? One hundred years, probably. So we are talking about 100 years issues now. But another 100 years, we never know whether we are, will be driving or we'll be flying even. We never know. So that now we have to think. The transportation system, now a hierarchy has to be changed from vehicle to people. Make it short. So poorly balanced transportation systems in the United States have led to auto-dependent communities. Then over the past several decades, our community has become less workable, less bikeable, less accessible to public transit, and less sustainable. That's what we are at. So now, it is time to shift our paradigm from auto-dependent transportation to people-oriented transportation so that we can build livable and sustainable the communities. As you know, there are still many issues and many challenges. We have to do the research for the future. Right? Thank you for your attention. Okay. Any comment? Any question? Okay. So, how many were bicycling? Maybe I was curious. So, there are, yeah. 
relatively good percentage. I see maybe I just say it's still 15%. So that's a good number compared to what we have. So basically, it start growing. Yes. So how many are pedestrian? How many are pedestrian? No, in general, everyone. One point, even if you are driving every day, you are pedestrian, right? So that, not as a drivers, we have to think as our own as a pedestrian. How many are getting old? Everybody. So that's what we are talking. We are talking about for the future. We are talking about right now. We will, will be right. So thank you. So. So one of your questions was, you are getting old, yes. you cannot drive, your, uh, your children want to come and they help you. But you, another part of your presentation is uh, in the future, oh, what, what's going on? This guy is, uh, actually, that guy is driven by humans. So yes. In other words, it's going to be uh, all cars <coughs> 10, 20 years later, maybe half of the who knows, yes. is a drive, driverless, <coughs> autonomous car. Then all this, uh, I don't have to call my son to give me a ride. That's yeah. why yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we are now developing self-driving right. vehicles, right? So, so therefore, that's the contra contra so yes. therefore, question is: is the contradicting mm -hmm. of why you propose? You're proposing is to eliminate car dependencies. We actually making addictive that even I'm 89 years old, <laughs> I can still drive because autonomous car is going to help that's me. That's true. That's so, why we are solving the problem, right? right. So either way. We don't know yet for the future, right. but we have to do all different. Basically, sustainable transportation is to provide right. multiple transportation options. Even if we have a self-driving car, right. whether we don't know, everybody is affordable. Mm -hmm. That's a different question. Mm 